If you're about to buy a MacBook, stop right there, because 80% of people get it wrong. They either waste hundreds of dollars on features they'll never use, or they cheap out and regret it year later. In this video, I'll break down every choice. Air versus Pro, Storage, RAM, Chip, and by the end, you'll know exactly which MacBook is perfect for you without falling into Apple's traps. You can use it as a formula whenever you want in the future if you plan to buy a Mac. Now, let's get started. The first thing most people struggling with is deciding between the Air and the Pro. At first glance, the answer seems obvious. The Air is the cheaper, more casual option, while the Pro is for advanced users and costs more. But that's not the full story. There are plenty of details beginners don't know about, and these two models are made for completely different priorities. Yes, performance is the most obvious difference, but here's something many forget. The Air doesn't have an active cooling system, it's fanless, while the Pro has fans. And that changes everything. With fans, the Pro can handle heavier workloads, not just photo editing, full HD video or web browsing, but also 4K editing and other demanding tasks. The trade-off is that fans mean more power draw, so battery life takes a small hit, and you'll get slightly less usage time away from an outlet. The displays are another big difference. The Air comes with an LCD display, bright and clear, but blacks are never truly black. They are more of a dark gray because the backlight is always on. Apple calls it liquid retina to make it sound fancier. This display doesn't have a high refresh rate, no HDR, and it's not as bright as the Pro's. It's great for studying, writing, web work, or tasks where color accuracy isn't crucial. The Pro's display, on the other hand, is a completely different league. It uses XDR mini LED technology, which means higher contrast, deeper blacks, and insanely good HDR. It also gets incredibly bright for HDR movies. This is perfect for anyone working with color-sensitive content like video editing, motion graphics, or film production. If you don't work with visuals at that level, the difference is nice but mostly unnecessary, and to the average eye, barely noticeable. Ports are also worth mentioning. The Air has just two USB-C ports and a headphone jack. The Pro gives you three USB-C ports, HDMI, SD card slot, a headphone jack, and MagSafe charging. Size and weight matter too. The Air is always 13-14 inches, making it lighter and easier to carry. The Pro can go up to 16 inches, but that size is heavier and not great if you're always on the move. And finally, price. The Pro costs more, while the Air is cheaper. But here's the key. The Air is enough for most people. If you do heavy 4K editing, motion design or professional level photo and video work, then yes, get the Pro. I'd recommend it for motion designers, colorists, film editors and filmmakers who work with pixel perfect visuals every single day. For everyone else, especially students, the Air will handle your needs just fine. It's lighter, portable, has a decent display, plays movies well, can have handle light gaming, and it's perfect for writing, browsing, and basic editing. And just so you know, it's not as simple as Air is cheap, Pro is expensive. Both have cheaper and pricier configurations. They're just aimed at different categories of users, and now you know which one is right for you. And also we know that most people choose MacBooks over other laptops because they have an iPhone. And it makes sense. The ecosystem just works. AirDrop, Handoff, Universal Clipboard, your devices talk to each other instantly, and you get this seamless experience switching between them. Now, since the iPhone is such a big part of the whole setup, it makes sense to protect it and keep it looking like it belongs right next to your Mac. And that's where Taurus comes in. I've been using their O3 Fitness case, and it's easily one of the nicest cases I've tried. It's slim and lightweight, so it doesn't ruin the clean Apple feel, but still has solid protection so you're covered for everyday use. What makes it stand out is this O-shaped stand built right into the back. Super handy for hands-free FaceTime calls, watching videos, or even propping your phone next to your Mac while you work. It's one of those small features you don't think about until you have it, and you use it constantly. And the design matches perfectly with the minimalist MacBook aesthetic, so when you put your phone down next to your laptop, laptop, it actually looks like part of the same setup. If you want to check it out, I've left the link in the description so you can see all the color options and details for yourself. Now let's back to the video. And the next thing most people don't pay attention to is the storage. As you probably already know, Apple isn't stupid. They know exactly what they are doing. That's why they have designed their marketing around storage. It's not upgradable, and they force you to choose it before you buy. If your budget is tight, the 256GB option looks tempting, but it can seriously limit your future possibilities. 
The 512GB option is much better, but the price difference isn't small. This creates a real dilemma for anyone buying a Mac. But look, in most cases, 256GB is not recommended. I personally considered buying a MacBook Air with 256GB because it was much cheaper than the 512GB version, and I thought I could cheat the system by getting an external 1TB SSD from Amazon. And honestly, that's not a bad idea. But if you think deeper, 250GB isn't just small, it's harder to resell later, and it can completely shorten the laptop's useful lifespan. Think about it. You have 256GB and the system takes up 25 to 30 gigabyte right away, you're left with around 210 gigabyte. You install your apps, let's say 150 gigabyte worth. Now you have just 16 gigabyte free. And don't forget, macOS system files grow over time with updates without your control. After three years, that space can become painfully tight. And if you regret buying it and try to sell, many buyers will instantly lose interest once they see 256GB storage. That's why I highly recommend going for at least 512GB. That way, you can use it comfortably for at least 6 years. And in that time, who knows? You might finish university and start working online, needing a laptop every day. And boom, you already have a capable MacBook. I also recommend getting a 1TB or larger external SSD from Samsung. It's one of the most reliable and fastest options out there. I'll leave a link under the video. So the conclusion for storage is simple. Buy a minimum of 512GB and then decide if you want to go for 1TB or more. In most cases, 512GB plus an external SSD is the best setup. The third thing you have to watch out for is overkill RAM. Let's make it simple. If you don't work with 3D programs, heavy visual effects, software development, or run multiple virtual machines at once, don't bother with more than 16GB of RAM. Right now, 16GB is enough for 80% of users, and there's almost nothing in a MacBook Air or even a 14-inch Pro that will max it out. But if you choose a Pro, then I assume it's for a reason. In that case, spending extra for 24GB, 32GB, or even 64GB makes sense. Especially if you use After Effects, Blender, or Element 3D. Editors know that 16GB can feel tight for certain projects. However, if you only use Premiere Pro for light editing, slideshows, full HD videos, or short content, 16GB is still fine. What I don't understand is people buying 128GB of RAM. Bro, if you need a thermonuclear machine, just build a PC. You'll get way better performance for the 5000 you'd spend on that MacBook. For me, 64GB is the limit for a MacBook. Anything beyond that is just overkill, no matter who you are. For students or regular users, 16GB is the sweet spot. And please, don't even look at 8GB in 2025. No matter how tight your budget is, save a little more until you can get 16GB. Buying an 8GB M4 MacBook now is like buying a pen that runs out after writing one essay. You'll be replacing it way sooner than you expect. Another thing to pay attention to is the CPU and GPU. On MacBook, it's actually easier to choose them compared to other laptops because Apple only uses their M-series chips M1, M2, M3, M4, plus their higher tiers like M1 Pro, M2 Pro, and the Max versions. These names sound confusing at first, but here's the trick. Step 1. Match the cheap tier to your heaviest regular task. Step 2. Pick the newest generation you can afford. For example, if your tasks are browsing, Netflix, Docs, light photo editing, occasional 4K video, coding, and multitasking, go for the base M tier, no Pro or Max. But get the new generation you can afford. The oldest is M1, the newest is M4. If you regularly do 4K video editing, large photo batches, or big design projects, go for the Pro tier. If you work with 3D, VFX, or multi-screen 8K editing, get the Max chip. That's pretty much everything you need to know about processors. Now let's move on to some smaller but important details. And probably the last thing to remember is that Apple products prices can be flexible. Outside the official Apple store, there are ways to save. First, check the Apple Refurbished Store. It's an official site where they sell like new devices that were returned or used for display. They have the same warranty as brand new models, and discounts are usually 10 to 15% of retail. Second, there's Apple's Education Store, where you can get around 5 to 10% off, plus free accessories during back to school promos, AirPods, gift cards, etc. In many regions, Apple barely checks student status. Some people qualify with minimal proof. 
And third, watch for Black Friday and regional holidays. Sometimes you can score big discounts, but this depends on where you live. In some second or third world countries, brand new MacBook models can even be cheaper than older ones. This actually happened to me. I was going to buy an M3 MacBook Air, but I noticed the M4 was cheaper. So I went with the M4 Air with 16GB RAM and 512GB storage. So that's it, we're done with this video. If you enjoyed it, thanks for watching and take care.